So my title's been titled Maintenance Therapy Newly Diagnosed Transplant Eligible Myeloma Patients. And obviously, this is a, an area of huge interest. Uh, so we have to be aware that maintenance is been making a difference. Uh, we've uh, tried many approaches before, steroids, chemotherapy, thalidomide, but none of those have been successful. And that's partly because any maintenance therapy should have a minimal impact on patients' uh, quality of life, particularly as this is their first remission. We also want maintenance to prolong not only progression-free survival, but PFS2 and overall survival, and not to impact on the outcomes of subsequent therapy. So I'm going to go through um, all of the uh, potential therapeutic approaches to maintenance. And obviously, the, the main uh, bulk of data is going to be around Revlimid maintenance with the uh, CalGP study, the IFM study, and the later McCarthy meta-analysis. And I'm also going to back that up with registry data from the Connect uh, Multiple Myeloma database so that Revlimid maintenance really has good evidence that it prolongs progression-free survival, prolongs overall survival. It done so in four large trials in a meta-analysis and has been followed up with uh, population-based data both in the US and Canada. So I'm going to talk a lot about Revlimid maintenance and what are the side effects and drawbacks of that approach. I'm then going to visit proteasome inhibitors because obviously proteasome inhibitors are also of interest in the maintenance setting. I think the, the main data is around the Velcade data. So Velcade has never been uh, compared with a placebo, but clearly it has been tried in a number of settings not least in the uh, Hobon study, where it showed particularly powerful activity in patients with 17p deletion. And I think a lot of people feel that in patients with 17p deletion, you really need to consider a proteasome inhibitor, plus or minus an image as a maintenance therapy. And I think that's one of the things that we're going to need to start talking about is um, for high-risk patients, is single-agent maintenance going to be enough? For standard-risk patients, I think Revlimid maintenance is the gold standard. What we haven't really established is what's the best maintenance strategy for patients with higher-risk cytogenetics. And of course, in terms of proteasome inhibitors, we've also got data from the tourmaline MM3 study looking at ixazomib. This was fixed duration maintenance of 26 cycles or 24 months, a placebo controlled study, but very well performed, and with a significant hazard ratio of 0.72, showed over five month improvement in progression free survival. So clearly, we have Revlimid, we have uh, Bortezomib, and Ixazomib as proteasome inhibitors, all valid maintenance strategies. I think we also uh, have to be aware that um, there is data now on daratumumab. We know in the elderly, the Alcyon study and the Maya study uh, have daratumumab as continuous treatment, and they're showing some really very impressive results. And we also should be aware of the Casio Pia study from Philippe Moreau, which uses daratumumab as a maintenance strategy. And that study is starting to show considerable progression-free survival advantage with daratumumab in the induction therapy and daratumumab in the maintenance phase. So I think uh, there are a lot of studies, uh, there are a lot of uh, positives happening in the maintenance setting. I think posing some questions, which is the best agent for which patient? Are we heading towards doublet maintenance? or even triplet maintenance for patients with high-risk disease. The other key question is the tourmaline data is around fixed duration of ixazomib, whereas a lot of the Revlimid studies have been around treatment of progression. What is the right duration of maintenance therapy? And can maintenance therapy be dictated by MRD negativity? And I think at the moment that isn't the case. Uh, but clearly, we need to understand the interaction between MRD negativity 
and maintenance treatment. 